me share my screen again. All right, so um, normally we start off with a bit of WordPress news and events. Uh, it's a little bit of slow time this year in terms of new things going on. WordCamps are pretty much, um, at least in December, I didn't see any significant ones coming up. Um, but just So some of these slides are left over if you attended last month, but a good reminder. So tomorrow is the state of the word presentation. So that's uh, Matt Mullenweg, who's the um, one of the founders of WordPress. It's, it's an interesting, um, a presentation usually every year. It, it's it's you know usually it's a high level um, view into where WordPress is going. So in the past, that's where some of the early discussions around Gut, what we know as Gutenberg or the block editor that that's where that came up. Um, so I, I'd highly encourage people to either watch it live. So it's gonna be tomorrow if you um, if you go to WordPress.org/news, um, which starts at 10 a.m. Or you can watch a recording of it afterwards. I believe they'll post the recording on that same that same link. So worth checking out. Again, it's not technical. I think it's appropriate for all skill levels. Just the other quick reminder too, and we'll send out a link to this um, afterwards through Meetup. Um, but the WordPress annual survey, you still have time to complete the survey. Uh, it just takes a few minutes. I did it myself um, since we last met, um, but it is very helpful. It's, it's helpful both to WordPress the organization as well as to um, organizers like ourselves. You know, it, it, you share your feedback of what's working, what kind of things are you struggling with with WordPress? What would you like to know more about? Um, so that, you know, again, if you don't mind, just take a few minutes to do that survey. Yeah, the feedback is really important to us. So tool and plugin spotlight, we're gonna skip this tonight because we're gonna be talking tools um, quite a bit and plugins during the, the demo portion. So give me one second, let me just uh, switch slides here. So I don't need that slide anymore. I need to move my window over and I think this is the one. Here we go. Can you see the slide still? Yes. All right, perfect. All right, so Tonight's topic is how to give your website an SEO tune-up, which is the, the picture of the engine down there. Um, so again, our agenda for tonight, we'll, we'll do some quick introductions to Peter and myself, um, and then we're gonna recap our project. So if, you've, if you're attending for the first time, this, this um, discussion is really part of a series of presentations we've done around a project, and we'll tell you more about that in a second. Um, I'll do a quick, high level overview, real beginner level of you know, how ser search engines work. Um, Peter will cover what's the difference between on-page versus off-page SEO. Uh, we'll talk a bit about some popular SEO plugins and you know, differences between them, um, you know, some suggestions we have around SEO plugins that we use. And then I think the majority of our time we're gonna try to spend doing these demos. So we're gonna show you how to perform a quick SEO audit of your website. Uh, and then what to do with it. So you'll see audit results. Uh, and that's the second part. So how do you fix or address the things that the, this SEO audit brings up? Uh, and we'll have a Q&A, final thoughts and what's coming up next. And obviously, as we said, during the demo portion or at any time, feel free to jump in with questions where, you know, don't save them to the end. Real quick about myself, um, Ray, I'm one of the uh, co-organizers of the Harper WordPress group. I've uh, been in IT 25 plus ish years. Um, spent a lot of my time in my career as a software developer slash software architect. Um, probably the largest portion of my career I spent at United Health Group. Uh, been using WordPress probably now going on five years as, as we turn into 2022. Uh, I'm currently self-employed, have my own business, building websites for small businesses and nonprofits. Um, I live in Newington, Connecticut. We're, I'm married, no kids, one crazy cat still, and I'm a geek. Peter. Hi, I'm, I'm Peter Ingersoll. Um, I've been using WordPress since version 2.9. Um, I'm a marketing communication person, self-taught in just about uh, everything I do. So take it all with a grain of salt, but comes with direct experience. Um, I grew up in Newington where Ray lives, but I live in South Windsor, Connecticut, and I'm married with two adult children and two relatively new cats who may occasionally jump up in front of the screen. They're getting more adventurous by the day. <laughs> It makes it exciting. Yeah. Especially when they pull plugs out in the middle of meetings. Yeah. So <laughs> if they lose just, you, we'll know yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. Um, so as I said, for folks who are joining us for the first time, um, um, we'll give a quick recap of this is, as, as I said, one in a series of this larger project that we've been doing for a few months now, I think maybe five or six months. So our, our goal was 
to really tie together and put some context to our, our meetup presentations. And our, we thought we would do that by building a moderately complex website from scratch. So uh, again, if you're here for the first time, if you want to go back and see what we've done, um, go to our YouTube channel. You'll see it from the very beginning where we first installed WordPress. Um, we set up a local WordPress environment, et cetera. So yeah, our goal was to build something moderately complex um, to only use free plugins uh, and only use plugins when needed. So tonight's gonna be a good example of, you know, we, we haven't had to do anything SEO related until now. So there are no SEO plugins on our, our website currently. Um, as I said, we've built upon um, previous meetups that we've done. So tonight we obviously need enough content to do a, a valid SEO audit. Um, we're trying to show best practices versus just quick and dirty solutions. And we'll always explain if we do need to make some compromises, we'll, we'll certainly explain why we did. Um, and obviously we want to do as much hands-on as possible and, and not you know, overwhelm you with slides. And the key thing too is that anyone can do this. So even if you're just getting started in WordPress, you don't need to spend money on hosting or anything like that. You can go back to our first presentation. You can learn how to set up a, a local WordPress environment. So our project that we've been building for the past couple of months is around a fictional nonprofit. Um, it's a, an animal rescue, which we named WP Animal Rescue. Uh, some of the goals of, as you can imagine, an animal rescue is education, donations, et cetera. So we've built out a lot of this functionality already. So um, again, you can always take a look at our site. We, we send out a link to it so you can see it as it's being built and, and play around with it. So as we said, even though what we're building is an animal shelter, and all of you on here probably are not necessarily building sites like that for yourselves, uh, everything that we're showing you can really be applied to any type of website, we hope. Uh, this one, so we started with an inspiration. We wanted kind of a graphic or, and just an idea to set up structure. So go back to that first, um, that first recording and you can see kind of how we use this for, to get us started. Um, we've built quite a bit actually. So I, I keep up, I try to update this a little bit. I'll, I'll run out of room eventually, but you know, over the course of several meetups, we've built out a homepage. We built out um, some custom post types. We built out a contact form. And, and last time we built a, a blog and, and um, some archive pages for a blog. So the site's getting there. And this felt like a good time rather than just building out new content, Peter and I said, let's take a, a bit of a pause and let's start doing something um, you know, outside of WordPress itself. Let's start doing a little bit of SEO because we knew we needed to do that to do that eventually. All right, so let's get started. SEO, I think that's everyone's here for. So I'm gonna give a, a real high, high level um, overview of you know, how do search engines work? And, and I assume most people probably know this, but um, again, until you really get involved in maintaining or creating a site, some of this may not be totally intuitive. Um, so I think it's, it's worth going over this a bit. Um, and let's start with probably two of the terms you'll hear quite often when you when you hear about SEO and search engines are is the idea of a search index and in, in a search algorithm. So a search index is really a collection of information about web pages, um, and it's it's on your site or any website. It's really discovered through hyperlinks. You know, so hyperlinks are the way to kind of join together content, both internally to a website or externally, um, you know, outside of a, a particular website. And there's this term called spiders and, and crawling. So, you know, if you if you manage or, or created a website, and especially if you have Google Analytics, sometimes you'll see this, you know, you see traffic on your site. Like, where's this coming from? And some of it could be those Russian bots trying to hack your site. But you know, a lot of it is generally spiders, what they call, you know, crawling your site. And that's a good thing. So that means search engines like um, Google, Bing, you know, other search engines. They're going through all the content out on the internet and, and really trying to build this search index. So think about that. Your site, everything on your site is put into a big index along with the rest of the world's you know, um, uh, web pages. And the search algorithm, that's the thing that's unique to different search engines. So Bing or um, Google, you know, they both have their different ways of ranking and, and ordering search results through an index. So the search algorithm is the logic which ranks and matches search results from against a search index. And there's lots and lots of factors around how something gets ranked. Um, some of it is completely unknown. Most of it, I'd say, is more of a mystery to people. And search engines themselves are constantly changing that algorithm too. So, you know, if you go back to old strategies from even five years ago or so, because of the major changes that Google and other search engines have done over time things that probably may have worked years ago don't work any longer. And these algorithm, algorithms are getting smarter all the time too. So 
uh, again, keep that in mind. It, it, I think it's a, a losing game to try to understand exactly what the algorithms are doing because they're always changing. So just a real quick high level picture of how this works. Um, and I wish I'd make this big screen, but actually that's harder for me to put my slides. But just, you know, here's the process in a nutshell. You know, think about these spiders are out there. They're crawling, let's say your site in particular. You know, so they go to your site, they follow the different hyperlinks along your site. They find all the resources on your site. That's the crawling phase. So that's the gathering of data phase. And this isn't just a one and done thing too. So as your site gets updated, as you add new content, remove things, the spiders will come back. <laughs> they're always, just like in your house, they're always coming back. They're always looking for new things on there. And it's not immediate. So that's another thing too. A lot of times people think, oh, I put this thing out on my website. Why isn't it, why is it not in the index immediately? Because well, the spiders are busy. They got other stuff to do. They'll, they'll come back when, when they want to. There's ways to force that. We won't get into that necessarily today, but yeah, that's the first step of the process is the crawling of site. Then all that information, as I said, goes into an index. So there's an indexing portion too. And again, your, your data gets, your site's um, data gets split up among all different other websites out there in the world. And then the ranking part of it is probably the most, you know, the part people really want to understand. So, you know, the algorithms are running against the indexes and you're really based on a lot of rules, things like, you know, relevance of your content, um, quality of your content, et cetera, et cetera. All these different factors together end up influencing search results. Um, and there's this, again, this picture I took from a, a site called mangoogles.com. Um, they, they have a lot of good information about how SEO works. So that's where this one came from. So as I said, and I'll just spend a couple of minutes on this, you know, the other part of it too, be, beyond the content is, you know, going back to how search engines have changed, you know, a big thing you hear about these days is search intent. Um, you know, that, that's beyond, uh, you know, in the past, if you think about search engines, we're pretty much almost more text-based. You know, they're, they're looking at the text that a, a person typed in for search results and they were trying to match against text of content. Well, now searches are getting a lot smarter as everything else is these days. And search intent really refers to why is a person conduct, you know, conducting a search. And three of the common, uh, the common types of search intent are navigational. So that's really if you just type in a website URL or you start typing in you know, um, you know, Target or Best Buy, something like that into your browser bar, that's, that's more navigational. You know where you're going. You just want to get the right URL to go there. Uh, informational is more of you, you have a question to ask. And sometimes your question can be very specific. You, know, you can type in a search bar, two plus two, and it'll you know, tell you four. It, it won't do a web search for that. Uh, or it could be something vague, like you know, best pizza near me or something. So that, that's more of an informational type search. Uh, and then transactional is when, you're, when you, you want to buy something. So you're starting to search for you know, 2021 Ford Focus or whatever. You know, it's like you're, you're looking for a very specific product. So that's, that's another type of, of um, a common type of search intent. There's other ones too. So again, it depends on who you ask. These are not like gospel, you know, they're, they're, but these are the kind of the three common terms you hear for search intent. So why is that important? It's important to understand search intent because that explains too why sometimes you do a search and Google displays different results. Um, even, you know, sometimes you type in the same term and things may look different. Well, you know, why does Google do that? Well, first off, depending on what the intent of the searcher was, that can influence the results. Um, geographic location. So you've probably noticed this before. If you search from home versus the office versus you know elsewhere outside your normal search boundary, you may get different search results coming back. Um, your browser history. You know, again, browsers store caches and cookies and things like that. So this is the old thing where you know you think that Google's spying on you. It's like why why did I keep getting this this result back? Well, you probably searched for something you know a week or two ago and it remembered. Um, also, mobile versus desktop devices. Your search results may look different um, depending on what type of device you're using. Uh, and paid ads. You know, if someone is, is uh, has a paid ad running, those results may be pushed up to the top of a results page versus what's called organic search results. And this is just kind of a, a crude example, but you know, something you could always follow along. So, if you typed in on Google right now, pepperoni pizza. You're gonna get a search result like this. You know, this is a, a good example of like a mixed search result. So in, in the top, the first part here is because I'm in Newington, so it's showing me locally pepperoni pizza places, or you know, there's local pizza places here. So again, your your results for those local pizza um, places are gonna look different than than mine. 
Uh, but because this, this term is a bit vague, it's like, you know, Google doesn't really know my search intent. Am I looking for information around pepperonis? It gives me nutrition facts, and then it gives me recipes below it. So, you know, th this is an example of some of these things are called knowledge graphs too. So depending on what you're searching for, all these different parts may be there. They may look, you know, completely different. You may see shopping on the top, et cetera, et cetera. So every, everyone, I think, has seen that before. So, so that's it in a high level of how search engines work. Any quick questions around that? How about I, how about I comment on something that we're going to cover a lot through the rest of this, especially because we're going to be doing a lot with, with on-page SEO and things like that. So this part, the, the SEO discussion is kind of one of the soap boxes that I stand on occasionally, although I, I, I don't do hardcore SEO that much anymore. Um, I do focus on a few few clients. But one thing I feel that I've personally, I've kind of been good at, and it's been very successful, has to be with what Ray was talking about when he was talking about how things get indexed and the algorithm and all of that. And much of SEO, and to this day, I'll talk to people and I'll hear other you know, SEO experts talking about certain things that is just outdated. And what happens is people are often looking for, how can I game the system? How can I, how can I beat the algorithm? How can I figure out what exactly I need to do to make sure that I've got the thing? I mean, years ago, you know, keyword stuffing and using invisible text on white background, all kinds of crazy stuff. Well, over time, those things got penalized because the ultimate goal of the search engines, and we know that when we're talking search engines, we're primarily talking Google. Um, Bing follows right in the suit, but it's all about how can we deliver the best possible result for the intent of the person doing the search? So the best SEO has always been the best SEO almost from the beginning, granted way at the beginning, you could you could trick the systems with keyword search. It was looking for exact words and how many times and oh, that must be about this. But we're talking, how long ago, Ray? 15 years, I don't know, oh, you know, yeah, yeah. a long time ago. But now it's really, you know, even trying to match exact words, Google's smart enough to know, you know, how words are used in context and what words are like words and plurals and synonyms and all the kinds of things. So it's much, instead of trying to figure out how can I beat Google, what we're gonna talk about pretty consistently is figure out how do I deliver the best valuable content to the people I want to come to my website and read it. And, how, and if you're doing that, then Google's gonna say, wow, this is a great thing about the thing that you're asking. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about some of these things. And I think, uh, Ray, for me, you know, using things like we talk about the Kinsta blog, for example, yeah. and Kinsta blog is a great example of amazingly written blog posts that, um, uh, make search and en search engines happy because they answer specific questions and the way they're organized and, and things like that. We will probably bring some up as an, as an example. Um, but I don't agree. try to game the system, put that energy into writing good content. And, and that, that's absolutely great. And that great segue into this. And just one final piece I'll, I'll add to that too, is because think about, you know, and you hear that you still, unfortunately, SEO is one of those worlds where um, there are some, let's say, less reputable people in there. And they've, they've unfortunately made some promises to businesses. I still run into business owners who like have been burned by SEO in the past. And it's primarily because of that. Like Peter said, they've, they've been promised things. You're going to be on page one and all this. Yeah. You could still do things to get to page one, but it's page one for a page that no one ever wants to be on. Right. Or you have to think about back to his comment about content. It's no good to be on the first page if no one ever goes beyond the first page. They just click on your first page and it's not what they want. They're going to stop clicking on that. And Google understands that too. So, you know, you, you really want to think about this in terms of providing content that people want to come back to and want to discover, not just like accidentally get pushed to the top of, of their rankings. Right. So. Well said, all right. So on page versus off page. You wanna do this, Peter? I don't know if you wanna. Yeah, so um, it, it's pretty much self-explanatory here, the idea of on-page SEO versus off-page SEO. So on-page SEO, 
as, as Ray's written so nicely for us, is focuses on optimizing parts of your website that you are directly in control of. So it's your website. What are all the things that you can do to optimize um, your site? It's everything from writing the content well, formatting it well, images. We'll get into some of the details. Um, uh, but it's all the stuff that you control. Off-page SEO, it's what happens outside of your website, but that ultimately brings um, your site to the attention of people. The relevance, authority, and trust um, are all the types of things, you know. So if nobody, it's the, if nobody links to you, if you have the best content in the world and you make it and you're invisible to the world, you, you know, you're going to have a, a, a tough time ranking high. Honestly, it is possible depending on, you know, what you're doing correctly on the Google Analytics and Google Search Console and making, you know, asking them to index for you. But it's the, it's the stuff, uh, off-page SEO is the stuff that happens, you know, through social media, through links from other sites, things like that. Anything you want to add to that? No. no. We'll get into the details. Here we go. So, with on-page SEO areas of focus, you know, what are we looking at? Of course, number one, and we'll keep coming back, the quality of the content, just we were already uh, talking about. Is it is it relevant? Is it written well? Is it, um, does it make sense? All of the things to talk about um, the quality of your content. And if you're writing, again, if you're writing well um, for people, you're writing well for Google, um, there's another thing I'll be talking a little bit about is introducing even some of the things that have to do with accessibility, making your site, um, uh, you know, more accessible to people with various um, uh, challenges to seeing, you know, whether it's uh, eyesight or hearing or things like that, that all helps. Search engine friendly URLs, um, a lot of that has to do with, um, and it's we're not necessarily beating again the idea that, oh, the exact words are in there, but Google does take that into account that, that you know, this page must be about the thing that you're talking about. The, the flip side of that is, you know, looking at your website and if, you're, if your URLs are something like, you know, your web address, uh, question mark, I, ID equals one, two, three, four, you know, those are the types of things that says a couple of things. One is I'm not 100 percent sure what the site, what this page is about from the URL level, but also they might not care enough to to work on that. So those are all again, this is the mystery of the algorithm. When you're doing it right for people, you're doing it right for uh, Google uh, internal site navigation. When Google is crawling your site and it looks to go through and see, are you connecting to things? Um, and not only is it through your navigation, but internal links from page to page so that when you're talking about something one topic you're linking to something else when you start connecting all of your content all of your content kind of you know rises in the attention of oh there's there's valuable stuff here um and and one thing uh to keep in mind too um for the most part we want to keep thinking about um with all on pages google indexes pages and actually content within pages Google, don't think about it indexing your website. Yes, your website should be, but it's looking for the content within. So think Google indexes pages. Um, site speed is becoming, you know, such a vital part of this. It all has to do with that user experience. Google is measuring it. If Google's going to send somebody to a site that takes 10 seconds to load or five seconds to load, really, four, three, two, one second to load, um, and that experience is not uh, strong for the site visitor, then Google is going to penalize that. Doesn't mean you you can't be indexed. It doesn't mean you can't be seen if your content is strong enough. But it's one of those things that we can take care of on page that overall, again, improves the 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 user experience. Um, and that goes to mobile friendliness. Um, although one thing really quick with this, they were uh, I just heard something on this, and Ray chime in on this one if you know. But the the uh, mobile first indexing is a thing. Right. So um, Google knowing that the, your website should work on a mobile phone um, and should work in a mobile phone as the primary site, even you know, not uh, it, it kind of avoid that. I built a second site just for mobile. Not that many of us are doing it. And, and WordPress is a great environment for not having to do that. Um, but the penalty for that's gone along with mobile friendliness, I think they backed off a little bit. Ray, have you heard about this at all? 
Not so much, but I, I, I know there's a lot of pushback from web yeah. developers around, you know, the rules sometimes were a little bit too um, complicated, but also kind of ruins the experience a little bit too. Yeah. People we're pushing a little too much for mobile. It's like, well, what about desktop users? And well, others, you know? Right. And a, a great example of that is the whole push to AMP, which I can't even remember what AMP. Accelerated AMP. mobile pages, I think. Thank you. Yeah. And, and which basically stripped everything out of your website. Um, much more let let us site builders you know have some control over that so still you want to deliver the same rich experience uh, regardless of what um a system that you're um you know browser you're using and if you're what screen size um but at the same time being sensitive to the fact that if you're on a mobile device you know don't dish up huge images that somebody can't see anyway so that mobile friendly is again is taken into account and if you're doing searches through mobile you know google is going to always be kind of looking for what's the best fit for this search that we're getting at this moment in time. Um, so one of the things that kicked in with all these different um, algorithms and the rules and there's, you know, and, and I can't remember which one this was in, but where secure websites, the HTTPS, HTTPS having your SSL certificate in place is now vital. Um, for, Google will, not index you or index you with indication that there's a, hey, be careful going to this site, that type of thing, because there, there, there are issues with sites that are not secure, that are not connecting to your browser through an encrypted connection. Um, it's so easy to do. Most hosts now, it's it's offered for free with a let's encrypt SSL certificate. We, we've, uh, I can't remember, have we done that yet on our site, um, Ray, yet? Um, uh, I think by default, yeah, when you said- By it, default, yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, optimize images again. Uh, look at the size of the images. It affects your page speed, um, and just images are valuable um, when you when you post them. You know, be sensitive to. And we'll look at some uh, speed testing uh, tools to see. You know, to get an idea of uh, how fast your website is working and and which things are bringing you down. So, image size optimization. Um, there are tools that can be used that that further scrunch down the image size. There's the WebP, and we talked about some of these in, in past meetups, um, which is a new, it's it's a great format, almost universally accepted at this point, but it's pretty amazing how, how optimized um, those images can be. Uh, a big thing is the, um, the page structure, using those header tags, the title tags properly. Um, can't be understated, but it's too often misunderstood or not realized how important that is. It's an accessibility issue, but it's also, again, it's the outline of, of say, you've got a blog post and you're using your, your header tags within the post. We talked about it uh, our last meetup. We'll talk about it again today. But it's, you know, Google understanding what's in this web page that I'm looking at. And when your page is structured properly, and even to the point of using things like schema markup, which is which is something we won't get, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about, I think, but we won't get into great detail. But it's it's the schema markup is yet another thing that further says this piece of content is about this, or it's it, you know this is a product, and here's the price because I'm telling you this is the price. You know, so Google knows what to do with that information. But even just the outline of it and using your H1, H2, H3 tags as the outline of your page. So very, very important. Meta descriptions, the things that are behind the scenes, your title and your description and, and th how those things connect and what gets used in um, Google. Will, when, when, it, when you have your little snippet, um, when you are found and you have the little description, you have some control over that and using descriptions properly um, absolutely helps with that. Not 100%, and in fact, even that's a variable depending on what somebody searched for. If Google's returning a page and you have to, it's fun to experiment with these things, returning a page that you did a search using this search phrase versus that search phrase, that little snippet may be different because it's trying to apply that to the thing that you're asking about. And the crawlable content um, goes into that, you know, that site navigation and, and making sure that one, your, your, those spiders out there can actually go through your site. Um, we'll, we'll have an example of that. And I've, I've seen, and I know, I know websites right now that they don't realize that um, they are preventing the spiders from crawling their site and they're going, how come I'm not in Google? And it's because you're telling Google, you know, 
do not we'll enter. See. We'll see that one <laughs> in a minute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Any questions on, on any of these topics at this point? I have a quick one. Please. Um, on the image optimization and the descriptions, yeah. I'm always going to understand why there's an alt text and a description. Why doesn't the description serve both purposes? A great question. Yeah. Uh, did you want to add something to that? No, no. no. If you got the question, I, 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 yeah. I've never could get the distinction. So, so you have, when you have an image, you have an image title, you have, an, have alt text, you have description, and you have the caption. Honestly, the least important for SEO, Ray, correct me if you're found, is the description. Yeah. The description is for internal, so you know what, what that image is. The, the alt text is alternative text primarily and should be used for um, accessibility issues. So somebody who is vision impaired will go, and as they're looking, when they come up to an image, if, if you're blind and you can't see that image, the alt text should be a description of what that image is. Um, so it would be like in our website um, that we'll see, we may have description of the alt text might be black cat laying on red uh, cloth, just so that the the person who is vision impaired can see that picture in their mind. That's what alt text is used for. Um, the problem with th that topic in SEO is that is always, you know, far too many people who claim to know a lot about SEO still look at that as, oh, that's a place where you can put keywords and stuff. Um, so so let me clarify a little bit. The description, yeah. Google still sees the description. So go Google will see the title, the caption, if you're using a caption, and the alt text. Google okay. does not see the, the description is not um, output in your HTML, right, Ray? I think, so. <clears throat> I think it's just internal. I thought that's how you're- It's just an internal. So, okay. so yeah, so alt text is where you're describing the text. And, you, you know, if appropriate, there is some um, opportunity to put um, some search engine words in there, but it, that's not the point. The point is to actually describe the image if it works, especially if you're using images that are complementary to to the, the topic. That's okay. how you and 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 all, all and and but it is important to know that you really should be paying attention to the fact that you need to use that alt tag um, for the purpose of accessibility, explaining what that is. The caption is another uh, field to use um, where now you can you, you can get descriptive of it that also applies to, you know, Google will see a caption and will apply that to the image that says this image is about this this thing. Um, okay, one, one quick follow-up. Please. Can't, I, I've been just putting the alt description and the alt text in the description. I've just been copying and putting the same thing in both places because it's they're yeah. both very descriptive. Am I penalized for doing that? Is there a no. problem doing that? No okay. penalty, but I'd be curious, would, would you mind sharing the type of description you would, you would use? Um, well, I was describing uh, uh, photographs and art. Okay. And so they, they're taking a picture of, of, of art. So we're attributing the artist and the photographer. Okay. In the description and in the alt text would be an example. Right. So for this, what I would do, and yes, there are variations, is I would do the um, the alt text would be, so I work, I work with um, a foundation that works with the artist. So it might be, the alt text might be um, abstract painting of boat on lake, you know, and you can only do so, so much art. We understand that. We're putting the kind of information that you're describing in a caption which works well because that is seen on the page if you're showing captions and you can hide captions. There's ways of using that caption and then um, deciding whether you actually want to show it on the page. But the use in, 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 the, in the case of things like artwork where you're talking about what year and the person and things like that, I would look at, are you using caption, the, the, the actual caption that will show up at the bottom of the photo um, and use I that. Am. I'm here. trying to attribute on page, but sometimes I can't control the color. So the caption, I have accessibility problems by using, because I don't have a lot of control on the 
caption, but I've taken you off course here. So I yeah, no, no, that's that's okay. It's a favorite topic, and I get I get yeah, I do get taken off course. And yeah, managing captions and doing some CSS code to then get them to look properly. For some reason, captions are like gray on gray often. You yeah, can't. yeah. Well, so it depends, and some of that too it depends on the theme. Depends, but there are ways. Yeah. I think back to the the caption problem of not being able to display it is there's different solutions to that besides putting into the alt text. There's CSS and other things that you can make the right. caption bolder or change your theme. So yeah, exactly. Um, we had a question from Maria. You have your hand up. Yeah, I had a question about um, structuring the page properly with the, the header tags and the title tags. So. The title of the page, WordPress um, says as the H1 automatically, correct? So what about like on the home page? Say no, it, like does, it doesn't. I think that the, whether something an H1 or not, it's not WordPress, it's your theme that's really- Okay, okay. <clears throat> yeah. And we'll go so, through, so it, if you don't mind, we're, we're gonna go through okay. a, a deep dive into our, and we'll look at each, I think, of these, these okay. different pieces. Yeah, and when we get there, Maria, be sure to make sure that we answer your question when we yeah. get there. Okay, thank you. We'll be able to show it. And, and this is probably a good time is before we jump into the demo. So these things that we showed on here, these are not the only areas of on-page SEO that you can you can manipulate. Again, right. there's thick, like a couple thick books behind me, or you, know, you can look online and there's tons of them. I think in my opinion, and, and Peter chime in here too, is there's also a limiting uh, you know, value and you get limiting diminishing returns in terms of what you focus on for on-page SEO. I mean, you can start tweaking, there's tons of little things you can tweak. These are the ones that we just, that Peter just described are probably the, the top priority ones and probably the easiest ones to be honest for you, you know, depending on your theme to go in there and, and easily adjust. Once you start getting deep into the weeds of some other SEO things, you know, it's measuring how much value that makes it is kind of questionable. Yeah, I always come back to put that energy into writing good content in the first yeah, place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, go back. To, that's why this was first quality content. That's the yeah. number one. Yeah. All right. So let's go into um, the demo part of this. So let me close this up and I'll set this up a little bit for us, Peter, first by. Again, okay. people haven't seen it yet, you can follow. So what, what I'd highly encourage folks to do is as we're going through doing our audit, um, you can either follow along with our site and, and do the same steps we're doing or you know, follow along with your own site. And, and I think you'll you know, should bring up better questions around what we're doing. So if you haven't seen our site, this is the build.harfordwp.com. This is the site we've been building for the past couple of months. Um, and we've built this using the free Cadence WordPress theme. Uh, we've pretty much used all free blocks in here. Um, I can just show folks real quick what's behind the scenes in terms of plugins. Again, we're, we've been going pretty minimal. So a lot of the plugins have been for specific things we've done in, in prior sessions. So right now there is no SEO plugin on this at all. So this is, this is our starting point. This is gonna be our, our site. So um, before we, so, what we're going to do, and Peter and I haven't really practiced this too much. No, I think, we're winging it on this one, everybody. So I thanks think, for. I think what we're going to do is we were going to do an SEO audit of this site, but we're going to show kind of two different tools to do that. I was going to show a, a desktop tool, uh, a free one that, that can do an SEO audit. And then Peter, did you ever find a, an online tool, a decent online SEO audit tool? So there there aren't any that are consistently free or that you don't have to, there, there may be, but I, but there are tools that can be done that, that will do a page by page. So we'll, we'll go okay. through it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so maybe the, before we even jump into the tools, you know, one of the number one things we, we alluded to this before is, is first off making sure that your site is being indexed. Um, so there's a couple of ways you can figure this out. I'll, I'll show probably a, one of the simplest ways to do that is, if you go into Google, I think we, Peter, you shared this once before too. If you just type in site colon, um, I think our site, unfortunately, because our site was being indexed before, Peter, I think it still shows up in, in Google search results, but. Oh, it probably does, yeah. <laughs> so here's a site that I've, let me just show you that this, first off, this is a real site. This is one I've used in our previous demos in the past. So this is my own demo.ctwebgeek site. Oops, demo.ctwebgeek. Demo so again, some of you may be in this situation too, where you look, it's like, oh, this is a live website, right? So you think that this would be visible and viewable <clears throat> um, in Google. But if you, one real quick thing you can do is go open up 
you know, open up Google. If you type in site colon and then type the name of your website, and I think you, you don't have to put HTTPS or anything like that. Just put in no. the, the URL and you hit enter. Mine's not found. Well, the reason it's not found is because it's not indexed. And, and that's one of the first things we're going to show you is, um, you know, you may want to check your own site because not only like in this case, none of my pages are indexed. But what I've also found from some clients I worked with is sometimes there's less pages indexed than they think. So for example, maybe a new page was added. And again, we'll talk about SEO plugins in a second, but that's a real, one of the number one things you wanna to do to begin with is see what's out there, see what's being indexed. So we'll show you a real quick fix for, you know, generally how this happens is on our site, the build Parker WP site, um, in WordPress, if you go to settings, and I always forget where it is. It's under reading. Yep. This setting has burned so many people in the past. This, this discouraged search engine, engines from indexing the site. So when this is turned off, generally what this does, and again, it says it's up to search engines to honor that request, but it, it works pretty much with you know, most major search engines. If they see this, this uh, setting, they will not index your site. They'll remember the crawlers, they will not crawl your site. So one of the very first things you want to do, and you may think about why is this switch there? You know, again, beginners like, that's crazy. Why would you ever want that? Well, when you're building a site, sometimes you're not ready to launch it. You want that setting on there because I don't want, you know, Google indexing things before they're ready to be indexed. So in general, when I'm building a brand new site, it's in a staging environment. I'll have this, this setting set. Um, but in our case, because we want to do our, we want to do our demo here. We want to make sure that that's turned off. Any, any other things to say on that, Peter, on the, the, the crawling part of it? No, we're going to talk about robots text yeah. separately. Okay. Uh, well, no, maybe now's a good time to mention that too. So that's that setting. Sometimes it's visible in um, right there in WordPress, but that also, you could have another setting inside of your robots.txt file. And that's getting a little bit deeper in the weeds, but that's another place where um, search engines could be blocked too. I forget, it's... Um, is it no index? I think is what it says in in the um, disallow. Disallow. Yeah. Yeah. It, so. Yeah. So that that's important. We'll 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 look at other sites and 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 look at the robots.txt just so people can kind of get an idea of what what they're looking for. You could even try it right here if you want. Uh, where do I see it on our site? So so no URL and then slash. Oh, that's right. Robots.txt. So what this what the robots.txt um, file is, it's a little text file that the search engines, Google looks at and Google does respect them and it says what you can do. And, and, and these can get pretty complicated depending on search engine tools or if, if you're really somebody who really is looking at what they do and don't you know want to, to uh, index. So in this case, if you notice, um, I don't know if you want to zoom in on that, but I can see it where it says, so it's saying, okay, for everybody who's coming to the website, disallow, do not index the wp-admin um, and anything below it. Um, so that's one thing that it's it's not allowing. I, I mean, so that you, it's not indexing your, your admin pages. Um, I honestly don't know what this one is. Do you, right? Because I don't. The allow and specifically saying the one admin file. Ajax. Yeah, I'm not sure. It might be because I'm, uh, I'm not sure. Maybe because I'm signed okay. in. Yeah. yeah. So, right. And so it's also indicating where the sitemap is. And we'll talk a little bit about sitemap generation. But your robots.txt file is, is, a, is a great simple place to start to say, hey, what do I tell Google when it comes to my, what's the first thing I tell Google? And it might be, go away. Right. So. <laughs> most, most people don't want. That's it. All right, and so you can check that for any site. It's yep. it's yeah. So so the way we're gonna do this, I think, is we're probably gonna go back and forth a couple of times of, of showing things, but we'll we'll also split up the findings. So if you don't mind, Peter, I'll start first. Maybe I'll I'll show the, the tool that I'm familiar with, and then yeah. you can do the, the online one. Absolutely. So um, so one of the tools that I I use for doing like an SEO audit is this tool called Screaming Frog, and it's a British company. So it's screamingfrog.co.uk. And we'll send out links to this afterwards along with our slides. Um, this is a great tool. There's other ones out there. This is just the one I, I've used the most. I think it has the, the nicest user interface. Um, so it is free up to 500 URLs that it crawls. Um, after that, 
you're out of luck. Um, but even that, so for smaller sites like ours, our animal shelter site, that's, that's more than enough. Um, I will even say for clients too, that just to kind of get a, a quick gist of, of problems, you know, even if you run out of the, the 500 limit, um, you know, you can still discover some things just by running the, the free version of it. So it does have a, a, and there's also a paid version too. It's not really that expensive. I mean, I'm trying to think what the pricing is like 80 bucks or so, 60 bucks for the paid version. I'm sorry, 150 pounds. So yeah, but you know, again, it depends on how often you, you use these things. So if you're just managing one site, maybe the free version is fine. But if you're managing, you know, several sites or you do this quite often, um, you know, I, I think it is a great tool. It's probably worth getting the paid version. Um, so from a down, so what you would do is because this is a desktop piece of software, um, you want to go to their main page and you want to download. I believe there's downloads available for Windows. Yeah, I'm on Mac. So I already have it installed. So there's a Windows version, a Mac version, probably a Linux version as well. Um, and when you launch the site, sorry, my Zoom window is blocking me here. When you, when you install it and launch it, this is what you get. So this is what the, the application looks like on your desktop. Um, and I have the, the latest version installed. And, and basically, um, all you, you, know, you begin by putting in the URL that you want to, to crawl. And in general, you want to put in the main website URL. You don't want to put in a specific page. You can do that, but you know, in most cases, especially in our example here, we're, we're doing the full website. So what we would do is, I'll just uh, grab our URL. You put it into the top here and you click start and then it starts to crawl. So, you know, again, that crawl term we talked about before, this is basically mimicking that. You know, it's, it's mimicking what these, these online crawlers are doing. I see it still says no index. You know, I saved it. Um, so what it's doing, it's going through our site page by page, finding every resource and every link. And then it's, it's, creating, um, it's creating a list of, of what it found, what it found for resources. So the reason we're, we're getting this no index is because we were originally had it turned off at the site. So Peter, I don't know, is there caching on the site, you think? Uh, let me check. You can clear the cache, perhaps. Yep, I will. Let me just double check the reading thing. So while he's doing that, yeah, because this is off, so we should be good. Um, what you'll see is, and we're not going to talk about all of this, but this tool itself, because it, you know, it is a paid tool used by a, a lot of SEO professionals, it's going to give you a ton of information. And, and it can be quite overwhelming at first. So that's why, again, if you think back to that, that checklist kind of that we talked about earlier on, um, you know, it's really what, what do you focus on? So we'll, as we do the audit of the site, we'll, we'll go through kind of things that I think are probably highest priority and probably easiest things to fix. Um, but again, a tool like this where, where it's handy is just the fact that you can dive into this data in many different ways and visualize the data. And again, as we're, we're doing the audit, we can, we can look through it. Um, we can look at more details at, at different parts of its findings. So yeah, me, it was, it, caching was on, it's turned off now. Okay, so let me try that again. So I'm gonna just clear the results again. So it wipes off this, it's a temporary database. I think in the paid version, you can save these things. The paid version, you can actually compare them over time and all that. So let's go back to start. Maybe that's better. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So as you can see this, our site here, it's pretty quick because we've just been building it. So it's gone through 63 of 63 URLs, 100% completed on this window. Sorry, it keeps blocking me, my Zoom window. Um, and what's really cool about this is that this tool shows you, you know, what did it crawl? So again, sometimes when people think about a, a website, they only think about their pages. You know, you go to the back end of WordPress, it's like, I've got six pages. Well, guess what? Every one of those pages has additional links. It has links to images, links, external links, internal links, et cetera, and even resources like JavaScript, et cetera. So um, what's, what's nice about this site is this will show you everything that it found, all the different links on your site, not just pages or posts. So this tool is the one I use quite a bit. So I don't know, Peter, at this time, do you want to, um, do you want me to stop and show? Well, I'll, yeah, let me show a, a tool um, that is free that's on the web. Um, and then I'll show you, like I do a lot, a lot of what I will do with this is um, with what we're going to show next, which I probably show next, right? Some of the SEO plugins. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you see the world, right? Yep. So 
there's a website out there called uh, Uber Suggest. Uh, Neil Patel is a super well-known SEO guy, guru, call him whatever you like. Um, this is his career and they do get in, he gets into a level of detail. There's selling, but there's a lot of things that, that are uh, free. So if you want to go uh, try some things out, um, a lot of what they're doing is okay when you're writing the content and suggesting so the whole uber suggest type of thing that's doing a search for for words um i wasn't going into that and i ran this just uh when we were when ray was just talking uh in the tool one of the things that there is is a site audit um link so that site audit link um does give some information that you kind of have to drill down and you know go through uh, each one of the pages, but this gives you some ideas of, you know, what pages are linked and, and some of the details. Now, what they're look, of course, this is the upgrade too. So that's the whole pay for, um, and you can put in individual pages and all. And a lot of what they're looking for is some of the things that, you know, I, I think get a lot of the tools will get into all the word count and all. And I'll, I'll always come back to and say, you don't have to count the words, so in my opinion, I know, I know the hardcore will get into it, but you just have to write good content. And if it takes X number of words and, and, and if it's, you know, some people will look at it and say, well, I have a page and it's got one paragraph, how come I'm not ranking? And it's like, it's just not comprehensive enough. Um, so word counts are one of the things um, that, this, that this tool does, but, um, there, there are a number of these things when you go search. The, the problem is with a lot of the online things is that um, they'll give you a taste and then it's pay for things. There, there's plenty of tools, uh, SEM Rush. Um, do you use any of these? Well, I call up a couple. Um, right. Oh. Not, not so much anymore. And again, part yeah. of it is a lot of this, a lot of these tools. So there's AHREFs, SEM AHREFs was the next one I was going to, a lot of people what, what swear problem? by it. <laughs> One of the problems with some of these tools, though, is their focus and their business is more on the off-page SEO than it is off-page off SEO and big business and big and business big, and very expensive tools. Like very they're... expensive, and they do a lot of things where they are, um, you know, they keep their own databases. So it's not yeah. like you know doing an audit on your own site becomes more difficult because they're not seeing your site. Things like that. Um, we're not going to really spend too much time, and I think we're going to want to do this in a different. Uh, meetup, but the the, the Google uh, Analytics, but more importantly for some of this stuff is uh, Search Console, um, and maybe maybe we get talk Bill into doing a, another presentation um, on the Search Console. But that's you know a free online tool that will help you with a lot of a lot of your indexing. But some of the stuff when I'm looking at some of those details that Ray's looking at, um, I will also see in the um, in the in the plugins that we're that we're uh, yeah. that we're going to talk about, so that's a good uh, point too. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't necessarily need to run these tools off site, but sometimes it, it's nice to have something like the level of detail and just the way that brings at least that um, S, the, uh, the SEO Spider one brings in all the information together. It, it's yeah. nice to see in one place. Yeah, uh, some that I've used in the past that aren't working the same way anymore. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but if anyone else has got any that they use and like, um, please let us know. Um, Do you want me to maybe then, um, like I said, we'll put some of these links in the, the references afterwards. Yeah. Too, but okay. Do you want me to take it back, Peter? And then, because I think the, the main goal of this is to show the, the audit results itself. So I think so. Uh, yeah, you do that. All right, so here we are. And again, what Peter saw would have looked um, fairly similar to this. Obviously the online tool may display it slightly differently. So, Again, you run this, so I imagine I'm in a beginner's shoes. You run this, it's like, okay, what do I do? What, you know, where, where, where do I begin? And I think that's what is very daunting to a lot of people. So we'll, we'll talk through a couple of things to look at, and then Peter and I will, will say, okay, let, let's identify a problem first, and then kind of how, do we, how are we going to solve it? So, um, so maybe the first, but the easiest thing, let's start with the, the easiest, easiest thing in the world, which is page titles. So um, if you want to see on your website, all, again, here's all the pages we built, um, all the page titles, you know, here's, here's what is, you know, search engines are, are seeing. So again, just a reminder, you know, what is a page title? A page title is something that you see, um, search engines see, but also users see in their browser. So 
for example, if I go to our page, I'm sorry, back to our site, if we click on, uh, we haven't built that one, we built news, I guess. Yeah, we have, yeah. So up here, you can see in my browser tab, you can see it says news dash WP animal shelter. That's the page title. So that's one place it, it actually gets displayed to visitors. It gets displayed in your browser. Um, and again, if we, let me see if this shows this SERP uh, snippet. 52. This is what it would look like in my search results too. So if I did a search and this page came up in, you know, in a Google index, uh, the WP Animal Shelter dash help a pet in need would display in Google in the list. <clears throat> so that, that's where a page title um, comes from or, that, or that's where it's displayed. <clears throat> but the thing is, what if you wanna change it? You know, so right now in our theme, <clears throat> excuse me, we're using the cadence theme and this kind of surprised me, Peter. I actually thought these were going to be blank, but it looks like Cadence by default is creating some kind of a, a page title for us. It's it's somehow using the probably the page title as we built it, you know, as we created the page, but then it's also appending a dash in our in our site name to the end of yep. it. Yeah. <clears throat> so I don't know. Do you, I'm, I'm wondering, do you even know where that happens today in Cadence? It must be somewhere in the. Yeah, I'll take a look while while you talk through it. I'll see if okay. there's a spot. Uh, let me just see if there's a place in here if, I, if it pops out noticeably. So, Ray, I've been you using can cadence. find that in um, customized archives. That's where your category titles are being put in. It's in the customizer. Oh. And archives, if you go, but for, for page titles now? If you go, I think it's there's an archive section. Um, go to page layout. Page layout. And um, if you scroll down, there's archives down there. No. Uh, we need that little tool that searches the customizer. Dude, archives I'm would sure. make sense, though. Archives would make sense for things like um, our custom post types, but for and our, anything in a category. Right. But I'm saying that our page titles, though, Cadence is actually creating page titles for things that are not in a category. So just to show this again, so our contact page, for example, where do we put that? That was under contact us. This has a page title. This is an archive page. So somehow, and again, I, I won't dive too deep into this, but this is just something for people to be aware of that your theme by default may be setting a page title for you. Yes. Whether right. you know it or not. So that's what, that's what Cadence does. Yep. Definitely. So by default, it's doing that. So let's. So where we want to do though, this is our, our first part of demo. Is we want to we want control over that ourselves, and this is where the SEO plugin finally comes in. So, um, so let's talk about plugins for a little bit. An SEO plugin. So again, the the two hundred pound gorilla in the room is Yoast. <laughs> and again, yeah. as I said Yoast is one of the sponsors of WordPress. So there's nothing against Yoast. Yoast does some wonderful things, and just honestly. Even if you don't use some of, the, of these paid plugins like Yoast or Moz or Neil Patel, all these other ones, some of those sites are wonderful, wonderful sites for resources of just free information about, you know, SEO, on-page, yep. off-page, tutorials. So, again, I, I'm not disparaging those, um, those tools or those sites at all. They're, they actually do a lot of good for the community. My... My bone to pick with Yoast in particular is I think a lot of people just install it by default or depending on how your website, your WordPress site was set up, let's say if you're using GoDaddy or something else, a lot of times it's installed for you or you've inherited a site and somebody put Yoast because that was the big thing that they used. What I personally don't like about Yoast is I don't think Yoast gives you enough control about over simple things. I think Yoast also is updated way, way, way too much. Like every day they're putting a new update out for what? I, you know, SEO hasn't changed yeah. that much. Um, it, and to me, it just, it's too much for what it does. And I think it does too little. It's, it's kind of my, my quick take on Yoast. Peter, I don't know if you have. Yeah. So my, here's my quick take on Yoast. Um, I don't, I don't, I used to install it too many times. It's like, SEO WordPress first thing you do is install Yoast is is tutorials um that's that's a choice and it's a great choice and more than five million active installs says it's a great choice they do uh support a lot of WordPress no no thing nothing against the company why don't use it um there's so much to it I don't like the they they the all the promotion that happens the upsell that type of thing 
um, there's a level of detail that I just don't use. And honestly, I'm not a fan of the SEO uh, plugins that keep trying to tell me how to write something um, that are like, you know, oh, you didn't put this in X number of times and all, you know, that could be helpful. But I see, again, in terms of where you're putting energy, I see people putting energy into trying to turn on all the green lights and get everything right in, in Yoast um, that, again, if you're writing good content, hopefully those would go on. But I, I personally just don't like that kind of interface. That, and, and when you're looking at, well, put in your keyword and let's count how many... Um, I'm worrying about the content. I just want you to make sure that um, the page is set up correctly um, with with page titles and tell me, you know, help me find where it's not set up correctly and things like that. So, so having said that about Yoast, it, we have different choices too. And again, this is what makes it interesting. My my SEO plugin uh, that I've been using probably most most frequently is SEO Press. Um, I really like it. Um, first off, I really like it because it's it's fairly lightweight um, in terms of you know just an install, but also it gives you access to basically everything you need. The free version, again, this is back to we're we're always promoting what what can you get for free? I mean, we're all WordPress users. We want free. <laughs> There's a paid version which does give you additional features and all that, which which is good for certain things. But probably ninety percent what you need to do on on page SEO. We're going to talk about today. You can do through SEO Press. Um, so that, that's my, my preferred SEO plugin on, on sites these days. And Peter, what's, what's yours? I can, I can just bring up. Yeah, so I have uh, two that I like. Uh, one is called the SEO Framework. This guy. Right there. Um, I, I, there's a, I, and we, maybe we'll show some examples um, of how it displays information in the admin bar and all, and what it does in the interface. We can, I, th I think it might be, it might be helpful to, to show people some of these things in, in practice so that they can decide, hey, oh, I like this or that. And the other one is called Slim SEO. Yeah. And for the reasons that it sounds like, you know, and th this is one that's nice because it gives you your title and your description right in your, in your WordPress admin list. And, and um, it, it's just a nice, simple. Is this a new one? I mean, again, we're, we're always relatively new. Yep. Yeah. So yep. don't, sometimes the numbers, we always say like, you know, get something that had, I mean, if you look at Yoast, yep. probably in the millions, but that's just because it's, it's been around for so long. So some of these are, they're newer, but up and coming, I guess. Yeah, if you click the, the view <laughs> details on that, I think it even says, if I remember correctly, it's like- On the more details then? Yeah. Um, Slim full feature. Yeah, yeah I, was, I wasn't sure if it actually yeah. said, but yeah. but yeah, no, check when the, the and the other, so um, just while we, before you get into the next thing, but, but the ones that people, if you just put in SEO, we'll probably see all the ones. Um, it's Yoast, Rank Math, people love. Um, all in one SEO has been around forever. Um, rank math gets into a level of science and detail and what they give in their free version so far. People love the SEO framework that they have, SEO press. Uh, then there's another one, SEO squirrel that I have not used and have no, um, uh, it's squirrely right there, the, uh, the, the rainbow one and then slim. Um, they're right there up top and you can see the number of installs so what will, and again, we're not promoting, so if you go back to, we're not sales promotions, we don't get any money from any of these companies. So um, whatever tool does the job, I think is the right choice for you. And again, going way back to our, our um, best practices, recommendations, you definitely want to use something that other people are using, something that's well supported. You want to well go look supported. at their website, not just what's on the repository. Personally, these days, I, I like I like plugins that do have a freemium model where, you know, there's, they give you some stuff for free, but then if you want the pro thing, you pay for it. Cause to me, that's how you support not just software developers, but that's how you keep, you know, you keep your software updated, et cetera. So you know, someone's got to pay for it. <laughs> so even though we're showing free stuff, if there's more that you want, or you really like the, the plugin, you know, go ahead and, and pay for it as well. So, so let's start diving into our site. So right now we don't have anything. So which, which one should we do? Peter, which which plugins should we do? Um, well, you're certain go with go with SEO Press, and I'll, I'll just kind of show them. Yeah, they're all. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing too. I think you know, this is one of those things where don't worry about making the wrong choice because right. um, 
you know, most of them do the same thing. That's what always makes me laugh about Yoast. All right, so SEO press. Let's start with this. this they do the same thing, and and many of them have um, ways of if you've put in like titles and descriptions and you decide you want to change, you can import or export right. out either directly in or there are some uh, tools for doing that. Um, while you're pulling this up, I, I want to check the comments. We have people who really like Yoast um, talking about what's good or bad about it. Um, the idea of um, having something where the, that whole readability thing doesn't apply to what they're doing. And, and I agree, a lot of times it's like, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you know, my 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 clients have a certain type of content that would never get the green lights and all of those and those types of things because it's it's not that type of content. And if anyone else has anything, you know, if uh, a pro or a con, feel free to. And speak SEO up plugins up. that you like and use, put them in the chat window too. We yeah, please. We like to collect them. <laughs> maybe maybe there's something that we're missing completely. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So we installed it again just to get into the the meat of this. So we installed and activated SEO Press. So basically, a lot of them, a lot of the SEO plugins work the same way. You know, now we have something in our our um, our, our, our dashboard here for SEO Press. Um, we won't go through all of this. Again, this is not a, 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 a tutorial for a particular SEO plugin. Uh, I'll just show you real quick. Most of them work fairly similarly. So when you first install one of these plugins, a lot of them now are friendlier. They'll, they'll guide you through setting it up. Um, in our case, I, I don't want to go through the, the full setup. We, we just want to use what we want to use. Um, but this plugin is very configurable. So one of the things that most of them do is most SEO plugins or good ones is they'll add what's called like a, a meta box to your pages and posts. And that's the place where you get to control at an individual level for a page or a post, a lot of the on-page um, characteristics and data that, that Peter had mentioned before. So, you know, some of the, the, um, some of the configuration you could do here is you could control where do you want those meta boxes to display? Do you want to set some defaults, et cetera, et cetera. We, we won't go through all of that stuff here, but just be aware of there's a lot of configuring you can do at this level, at the, at the plugin level. But for the sake of time, where we'll spend more of our time is let's look at that example of, we won't change all of these. Well, let, let's pick one that maybe, uh, one that probably should be changed more. So let's look at, um, let's see how about sheltered news. Was that a good one? Or advice on adopting. So let's go to one of our posts, maybe Ad advice on adopting or, or yeah, advice on adopting kittens and cats. So that's a post because we created that not too long ago. So if I go to posts, uh, so one of the first things I think you can already see this is if we didn't show this before, unfortunately, but the SEO plugin has added some columns here. And, and I know it's done that because if I go to screen options, I could turn off, uh, where are they? The meta description, no follow, all these different pieces were added by the SEO plugin. Um, so again, it, sometimes it'll make your content look a little bit squished. So if you want to remove that, in our case, I'm going to remove comments here just to give ourselves a little bit more room. I'll get rid of score. So even though this isn't Yoast, a lot of these plugins try to do you know, Yoast-like things, but you can always turn that off and, and ignore it. Um, so advice on adopting kittens and cats. One nice thing about this though, if you're doing a, a bunch of pages at once, what you can do is rather than going into what we'll do in a second, you can do this at this level. You can go to the quick, quick edit, and here you can start adding your title tags and title descriptions. Really handy if you need to do a bunch of them or make a bunch of changes, and you don't want to go into every single post or page to do that. So you can do it at this level. But in our case, let's get it. Let me cancel that. Let's go in and edit this page. I'm sorry, this post. So what did this plugin do? As I said, it added at the bottom of our at the bottom of our post, it added this, this, this meta box. Uh, and again, I, most of them pretty much do this. They all do this on a post or a page. What varies is the, the different tabs you'll get and, and what you can manipulate. So as you can see right now, I haven't done anything, but this is showing here's what our default title is gonna be. So our default title, it's taking the page title, adopt, advice on adopting kittens and cats, and then it's putting a dash in and it's putting in our, um, our site name. So again, our page title is this. So let's say we want to change that. Let's say instead we wanted to say, I mean, I like the advice on adopting kids and cats. Um, what well, would be a better page title for it? Uh, maybe, maybe we don't want WP Animal Shelter at the end of this. 
So the, with this plugin, you can set by default a couple of things here. You can say, you know, I do want it to use, let's say, our, our post title. And uh, I can say, what kind of separator do I want? Maybe I don't want a dash. Maybe instead I want a, um, uh, I want a, a pipe delimiter or something, you know, so that there, there's another place where you can set what this looks like. And then I could say after this, I wanted to say something else. I want to say, instead of WP animal shelter, maybe I want to say, I don't know, my animal shelter. So at this point, this is the only change I've made. So I'm saying, <clears throat> you know, go ahead and take what I've already put in previously and it's gonna, um, the SEO plugin is gonna fill that in. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is type it in yourself. So let's say I wanna actually type in my title. So um, I'm thinking, what was the name of this thing again? Advice, advice on adopting kittens and cats. Uh, so going back to this for a second, sorry. Let's say I, let's say I just wanted to be that I can go ahead and override what Cadence was going to do, and this plugin will now use this as my page title. But this is probably a good time to talk about best practices for page titles. So again, like we said, what what are they, and how can you use them? Yeah, you know, and, so and Ray. Yep. Yeah, good. Yeah, like one thing you might want to do do with this, if and maybe you're going to talk about that next. You were looking at like what to type title it, but you know, um, from from a shelter or something like that. Did you? because this is an animal shelter that we're doing. So now we're putting that kind of, okay, cats, kittens, shelter, we're starting to describe. And Didn't mean so, to steal, steal no, any no, fun. Yeah. We're, we're, we're freestyling here. <laughs> we are, man. We're just... <laughs> so one of the first things you'll see though is um, again, getting back to best practices, you know, the recommendation in a lot of the SEO literature you read is to try to make your page titles 60 characters or less. Um, and the reason for that is because when you think about this, this snippet, like this is showing what it, this will look like on mobile or this, I'm sorry, this is showing on desktop. You want enough there that people can read it so the text doesn't get truncated. So that's basically what the 60 characters says. So, you know, you want to keep it within this limit and the tools do nice things for you. Like they're, they're tracking your words. So you'd have to, you know, keep track yourself so that it's doing that for you automatically. Um, but again, you could type over that. So if I want to say from in, let's see. In shelter. Oh, we're, we're still at a perfect amount there. So what, let's say this is going to be our, our new um, page title. So let me just update this right here. So now I think, well, I don't want you to clear in cash every time because it's a pain in the neck, but basically this would override what we saw here. That would override what we saw there. And, and again, why would you want to do this? It's because from a, from a search results standpoint, maybe this is a clearer title than putting in the site title, you know, um, that, that was really meaningful to somebody who's doing search, you know, seeing this in a search result list. Um, it, 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 now we talked before about keywords and, you know, the old practice of, of keyword stuffing. I mean, you don't want to do keyword stuffing. We're not really going to show a lot about doing keyword research, but a page title is a place where you do want to put at least some information that tells you know, like what's the main purpose of this page, whether you want to call it a keyword or not. You want people to know, like, you know, this is your this is your headline. Think about this like a, a news, a news story. This is your headline. So try to keep it short and sweet, but make it meaningful um, to your content. Anything else you can think of, Peter, on, on page titles? No, the, uh, there's you get into the, the some of the detail about what words come first and on which devices and uh, uh, like that, you know some say you know what title adopting kittens and cats on ad, advice and you know something to that effect the actual word uh, layout as you can see in the snippet and one thing that's nice about the SEO press tool I'm looking at some of the ones I have is it gives you that that idea of what the snippet might look like. Um, there's no absolute guarantee. And of course you could see the words and once you know, once you get used to it that, you know. Um, and what happens when you did you do the mobile, pre oh, you're on mobile preview. This right? is mobile, yeah. So this is what yeah. a desktop would look right, like. Right, exactly. Um, yeah. You know, so um, sometimes the word order, but this is where you do get into, okay, am I using the right words even in the first place? Um, and that's a whole keyword research thing that we're just not going to get into right now. Um, but this is a, to me, this is a good title because it really, you know, 
think about somebody now we're doing long-term searches and that's a big part of what this is so if um uh it, it, it way back when you know might be adopting kittens and i got a page but now it's how do you know I, I when i search now i search for how do i but you know in a sentence because i'm getting the best response because i've been that much more explicit in my search so if it's like and you know it's on a kittens from a shelter might be something that somebody's actually going to search for right, right. and now you're going to hit and keep in mind too that there's a geography base to that too you know right. in connecticut which we could put um as yet another qualifier but then there's ways of also handling it in not only the site itself but then what we do in with some other tools out there exactly yeah so other quick things on this too and again we're going to go through a couple more but just other um going back to this audit tool where this audit tool is helpful is just getting that quick i mean you can do this on the back end once you've installed uh once you've installed um, the seo plugin but this will show you across your site all the pages and posts and and Again, one best practice you want to do is first off, you want to you want to take a look at all your page titles and make sure that they're they're meaningful and and look at the length too. So you know, even though we said over sixty is is bad, you know, again, not really bad. You want to make sure that you have enough in there. You know, so don't don't give up space either. I mean, don't do keyword stuffing and all that. But while you know, this is a very important part of of each page is the page title. So take advantage of that. You know, make sure that you do make it meaningful. Um, and here's the quick again, this tool itself will give you some some interesting things to look at. So I can move my window up here. So are all my page titles complete? You know, is it 100%? That's what you want to see. Are there any missing duplicate? This one to me, I, I'm not sure if this really knocks you as much as it used to, but you know, yeah. ideally your page titles across the site should be unique because every piece of content on your, your site should be, you know, unique or canonical or whatever. So um, again, using using an audit tool gives you a quick way to kind of look at that. Yeah, for page for page titles, yeah, you'd want to avoid um, a duplicate title because again, it doesn't differentiate why one over the other, and then Google says why one over the other, and I got to pick one. Things like that. But there's a whole topic about this duplicate content um, that gets people very very panicky. Um, basically. You know, for your writing original content, it's not really anything you have to worry about. A lot of it has to do with the fact that literally people are cutting and pasting from somebody else's blog post. And now, well, which was the original and all that kind of stuff, what's original content and also, um, You'll hear an SEO, it's just sort of a, a, a note that you'll hear an SEO, that whole topic about duplicate content. And yes, it's talked about a lot less because I think people have come to understand what it actually means. All right. So since we're on page titles, let's let's go quickly to its companion, which is the meta description. So here's a good one because ours by default, um, our theme, our cadence theme was not doing anything with this. So all of our meta descriptions are are blank. So again, you know, what is a meta description? Well, you know, one of the key reasons, well, key things for meta description is it's what displays on your search results. So this looks a little bit different because now we have the SEO plugin. So the SEO plugin is trying to create a meta description for us. And what it's doing is it's taking some characters, some, some of our text from our content, and it's just putting that into the meta description. Um, quick, quick correction on that. Sure. Um, this is using the excerpt. We filled in the excerpt with Oh, this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're yeah. right. You're yeah. right. I'm sorry. I thought that was grabbing yeah. it for the content above. Yeah. Yeah. So most of, most, if you don't put anything in the excerpt, then and I and I strongly recommend I think you do too Ray that sure in is, fact yeah. one of the best places to manage your meta description is with the excerpt because it's used in other places right um, but you can override that if there's any reason to and a big thing again in looking at the snippet is um, your click through rate right so what are you what are you saying when somebody does a search and then what are you saying on that on that SERP the search engine result page you'll see the phrase SERP um, that then makes it enticing to click on. And this is your opportunity um, to, you know, maybe your excerpt is something you want to use a certain way on your site, but on uh, Google and when it's when it's using that for a description of it, you might want to be more explicit or more something more enticing uh, about it. Like you might even put in here, um, you know, our, our, uh, uh, and not to write what you're again, what you're doing, but you know, our 
our folks are happy to talk to you about adopting a kitten from our shelter as part of the advice for like, oh, and I can actually go there and get advice, you know, that type of thing. But that's what you're hoping will show up in Google. And again, Google doesn't have to use your description, yeah. but it generally likes to use it. So I'm going to so, go check comments while you do that. Yeah. <clears throat> so you know, the key takeaway from this is you have the power to, to control what that meta description looks like. As Peter was saying, think about that, even though there's a search engine component to it, really the primary purpose of it should be to get people to click on the link. So if you just had a page title, people would say, all right, you know, I, I don't know enough about this page perhaps to say, yeah, that's the page I want. So going back to search algorithms and all that, you know, pages are rewarded for being clicked on because it says, oh, that's the authoritative source of this, you know, this, this search result. So, you know, be creative in there, make, make it enticing is kind of the, the advice I was hear about that. Um, but again, you're limited to, so the, the nice thing with this tool is it'll count it for you. So try to keep it below 160 characters maximum. All right, anything else in meta descriptions? We, so now if I go back, now I've updated those two things. So if I go back here, oh, you know, by default, I guess it's not taking in the meta description. Let me see if I need to refresh that. It, yeah, most of the SEOs, it's the meta description that you've entered as part of the SEOs plugins database. Right. Okay. So I don't think let's, you changed that one, right? Let's just make it. Yeah. So just to make this explicit. Yeah, let's say we're going to copy and paste that one. Yeah. We paste this into here. And as you can see, we still have 99 characters left. So let's just pretend I just want something in here. Uh, it's quite too much. Yeah. You're, 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 you're picking the, the uh, <laughs> lorem ipsum, but the cat version, the catsum. I really love. So in this case, we're down to two, four. So here's where you get to a little bit of challenges. Uh, at some point now, I'm just doing this, of course, it's, it's nonsense where it's just for the sake of time, but you want to, again, you want this to be meaningful. So now I've, I'm going to save this just to show two quick things, just to show if I go back to, if I go back here, now I can see the meta description here. Um, and then if we reran the spider after clearing cache, that, that would show up as well too. All right, so we've tackled page titles. We we tackled meta descriptions. Where what's another? Where do I go next? Writing a description is is, is shouldn't be. Uh, and and Sue had mentioned too, like excerpts are really important, and writing a description shouldn't be uh, undersold in terms of being. It's also it's a great exercise in saying what is this page about, yeah. right? Because that's again one of the things with all of the format of the data on a page, um, whether it's a page, a post, whatever, what Google's trying to say is, what is this about or what's in here that, what is it about that I can figure out in that page description. And now when you tie into um, a, a click through and getting, even using it as a call to action, um, being very clever on what you could do with those X number of characters, like just like tweeting, right? You know, okay. um, that's something to, to, to consider. Um, in terms of what's here, um, I mean, maybe that's, a good, maybe that's a good segue yeah. into yeah. another thing. So back to de describing the structure of your page. So obviously you're controlling content, but another way that you, you help not just search engines, but people understand the structure of your page is through those header tags. So um, Peter, I don't know if you want to maybe talk a little bit about like H1s versus, you know, et cetera. I mean, the, the quick, the, I guess the, sorry, the quick thing I'll say about it is a lot of times people misuse header tags because they see that their theme does formatting and they think, oh, that's, I want bigger text. I'll make that H1. I want smaller text. Let me make that H2 or H3. Yeah. That's not the proper use of header tags. Header tags really are meant to like from an outline perspective. Yeah, I'll, I'll take, <clears throat> I'll take the screen on that. <clears throat> I'll also give a quick show of those two of the two other uh, plugins very very quickly just sure. just because sometimes people get curious about it um before you unshare um sure. at, 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 in screaming frog mm -hmm. the the h1 the h2 that are in top I, I forget if it gets into a level of detail of okay like how many I, I remember i was scrolling right and always and getting all the different ones right so right. this gives you an idea of okay great i'll take i'll take over from here all righty and again, while we're switching screens, if there's any questions or please let us know. All righty. Uh, too many windows, too few windows. I have a quick 
elementary yeah, too, actually. Uh, earlier you said MetaBox, and I think that was a feature in the that SEO plugin. And is it just where you put the meta description, or is it where tags show up underneath the post, or is well, what is a MetaBox? So MetaBox is a wonderfully confusing term because there's overlap with other words of the uh, other use of the word um, meta. Um, so, uh, and Ray, again, chime in, but the a meta box is literally a place where you fill in information. Okay. In, th in, this, in this particular case, there's also a field called meta title. It, if you had other things, um, you know, technically these are meta boxes, right, Ray? Right. Would you? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think if you, if you had like if you have like WooCommerce on here or something too, yeah. it may have its own meta box below the this SEO thing. So different so, folks may add them. Yeah, meta refers to all the other bits of data associated with a page, a post, a product um, that further describe it, um, but aren't part of the main body of the text. So these are all meta boxes where you fill that in. Um, and then certain ones are actually given very specific where they use the word meta again. Uh, so meta title and, and meta description that goes back into the HTML um, and, and, and defining like the, the title tag is put into a, a title tag. Um, and the description is meta description equals and then in quotes. So it's just the way it shows. We can show you on the on the source code. Well, I, think I, I, I think yeah. I have most of it, but I, I'm not sure if it, if this meta description or this meta tag shows up is visible to your visitors, or if this is something behind the scenes. Yeah, I'll show you right now. Okay. So if we if we look at um, if we view this post and I go to view the page source. Uh, I'm going to the bottom line. above inspect. Thank you. Oh my, I have too many things. <laughs> right. So this is the actual source of the page. And then if we look at, I just usually just search for it. So there's our title. And this title will be defined by, oh, sorry, I brought in the another clone of this site. That's why we're not seeing, let me let me bring it on the right side. Yeah. Um, so that's the correct site. And let me go to the posts, uh, all posts, and let's view this one. See, now you're seeing what, what Ray had. Um, and we'll view the page source. You gotta right click on the right thing. If you right click on an image, you'll get all the choices for image. So there's the cleaner title that, that Ray put in and then meta name descriptions. So these are all meta things that describe it. And here's what, um, what Ray changed it to that the is loaded in the plugin, in this case, SEO press in the database that is now being output in the HTML, the, the language that tells the browser how to display the page. So it's visible, but not on the front end, it's visible on the back end and used in, in various ways. Um, if you go back in time, I'm sure the browsers might've shown the description at the top of the page automatically, but we're talking about Netscape 1997. <laughs> um, so the structure that we have here, when we're looking at this, the, the, the page, um, if I, sorry, not view, I'm gonna edit this page. And this is a good one because we spent a little bit time, we spent a little bit of time on the um, blog post writing where we described, you know, how we would use um, some of these, some of these topics. So, you know, this is a heading tag and it's using an H2. And this is a heading tag and it's using an H3 because it's a sub. We didn't like do indexing, um, indenting or things like that, but all things for readability. If I look at this on the front end and we're talking about proper structure, I'll, I'll show you, um, here's, a, here's a tool that I wanna show you. It is the, um, it is called Detailed SEO Extension. There are a lot of really cool tools in, um, gotta move this box, it's in my way, okay. There are a lot of really cool tools as a Chrome extension, So the detailed SEO extension that you can add to Chrome gives you a neat little click of a button that shows you a lot of the things that we're seeing in some of these other tools. So Ray, this is another thing, but this is a kind of a per page thing, which 
yeah. is a great way to go. You go through your pages and you look at it. So um, if you're using Chrome or really pretty much any browser now that's Chrome based, um, you can go to extensions and then add this, this little tool called detailed SEO extension. And then when you're when you have that loaded, you get this. If you look at the top of my screen, you'll see the D there, which is in my toolbar, which is to click that on. And when I click that, I get this neat little uh, box that opens up and gives me all kinds of detail that it's reading off of this page. It's really handy for looking at search engine optimization. So there's my title. Right, this is the custom title that Ray entered that we saw how it output in HTML. That this tool is helping me see this on the front end. The description, just confirming the the URL, and then the canonical and nice little thing. The cano the canonical tag tells search engine like Google what is the preferred or main uh, URL. So because sometimes there's links or copies or things land somewhere. What this says here's the first source. Um, in the robots tag, it's saying what happens with this particular page. Now it's generally set by the site, but it's saying, so this page, you can, it's indexable and can be followed, meaning um, links from it can be seen. Um, you know, if you have keywords set up, uh, keywords is a thing that we don't really use anymore as a, as a tag. Um, setting up things like publisher if it's important. Now it's getting into, okay, what is the layout? We have one H1 tag. Uh, this isn't pretty, this isn't very accessible because it's hard to see, but H2 tags five, H3, 12. And then if we get up, go up to the top here as a choice, we can see nice. how these headings work in an outline. And this is that whole, that whole idea of a properly formatted document using the H1, H2, and H3 tag um, uh, correctly will give you the outline of the document. So advice on adopting kittens and cats. Is the cat is a cat the best choice for you? Well, here are some topics that we were writing in there. Cats are not dogs, understanding cat behavior, cats are closer to their wild selves. Are you ready to adopt? And then where, um, which type, preparing. So now this is meant to be, hopefully in our example, a way of looking at did we, are we breaking this document up into usable parts? And keep in mind that Google will also look and say, maybe I want to grab the snippet under the, the topic of, is a cat the best choice for you? And just show that as the snippet. Or um, when we get into even more, and we're not going to have, we won't have time tonight, but the idea that you can have, you know, maybe in here we have a frequently asked section um, and we, tell Google this is a FAQ. And now in your snippet, you might show some of the FAQ, but using, uh, using headings uh, properly is really important in the, in the layout. This is also used by um, uh, uh, screen readers for, for vision impaired uh, site visitors to be able to navigate your site effectively. And they can go and say, well, show me the header, the header. Let me go see the headers and go, oh, that's the section. Now I want to let my screen reader read to me. So being able to give them uh, a place to go to the piece of information that they want to then expand on uh, is very, very valuable. Um, this tool starts also shows uh, uh, information on on links, internal and external. What what you're linking to? A lot of these would be you know things that we have in navigation and all um, images. You know, oh, I've got four images in here that I need to go and add alt tags. Um, uh, the the title, which um, and this is a good question that goes back, and we'll follow up on this in terms of is the title used because this tool is actually looking for it. So that may be. Mm -hmm. That may be something important to see. If you have schema, um, again, the, I'm throwing a word out there without spending a lot of time in it, but something that describes um, very structured data. Again, a product is a great information. A frequently asked question is can be defined by schema that says, here's the question, here's the answer. Here's the question, here's the answer. That's an organization um, that, um, that uh, the search engines Google can use. Um, the and and Ray, I don't know if you want to come back to this in terms of the social. Um, yeah, we can cover that. I think a little bit in the advanced stuff. So I mean, just kind of exactly. wrapping up the the, the heading yeah. tags thing. Yeah. I, I think the the key of that is, like I said, the headings are really 
supposed to be used to help like not just Google or, or you know, it's to help your readers understand the importance of your content. So what's, you know, what's highest priorities or H1, kind of what's, you know, H2s or below. So the old outline, if you think about this as like a, a paper in high school, how you're outlining it. Right. Um, that's really how they should be used. And you know, just some general rules of thumb. I'm not sure if these really get penalized that much anymore, but in the past it used to be said like, you know, strictly one H1 tag per page. Uh, you know, don't skip levels. Don't go from an H1 to like an H6. You, know, you really should have something in between. I, I, I get a sense these days that it's not, you're not going to get penalized as much for that. But just think about it in terms of your, your readers. You know, you, right. you want to follow, you know, a logical structure with, with right. headings. Where we get into trouble are, are often with um, when we're doing design pages and using um, even even the Gutenberg blocks or a page builder where um, mistakenly using headings for formatting versus okay. for for structure and then you get into weird things like if you looked at you know maybe maybe this page is an example of you know too many our H2s. guys down here you know shouldn't be h2s it should right. be you know an h2 featured adoptable pets and maybe an h3 or maybe not at all that's a that's just a section and all so you can really take an uh, analysis of how you use headings yeah, maria that's has a, a quick question, question. Yeah. Um, yeah peter if you could go back up to that extension yeah um there's something about description so what the second item there underneath title yep so what is that referring to? How would you correct that? So that's the the meta, the, the meta description that um, these these uh, SEO plugins that we're using give us a control over. So um, so you would yeah. go into that home page and then fill out that meta box for description. Exactly, exactly. So if I if I went to edit this page and now using the uh, we have the uh, SEO press, what you what it what that tool was showing us, the title, WP Animal Shelter, it's saying, hey, that's too short. It's not descriptive enough. And if this is a real site, we would say um, uh, animal, the, if it is actually called the WP, the WordPress Animal Shelter in Newington, Connecticut, um, and then help a pet need would be, you know, adopt dogs and cats in central Connecticut, um, that type, that type of language. So, okay, that's great. yeah, that that is where they're they're that's edited, and um, a tool like this, actually, the screaming frog tool that Ray showed, the SEO tools that shows, or something like this, where it's giving you. I really, this is a jazzy. I don't know if you've ever seen this this uh, Chrome extension. No, I like it a lot. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, it's very clean, and as they write, it is a. Uh, it, Designed by SEO people, so it's That's a it's awesome. a neat look. It's a neat find. Let's, hey, um, Peter, since we still have uh, some time, how about you? Do you mind going into? We talked a little bit about alt, alt text on images, yeah. but let's let's show people kind of where where you could do that. Where that is, you, okay. Yeah, do you mind? Um, no, not at all. So let me call this guy up again, and we'll go to let's go to this one. So if I edit this post, I think we brought in a photo here. So this photo here, um, when you when you load your images, you have in in WordPress um, your your image block, and even if you're using the classic editor or other um, blocks that still are, you know, here's where you're putting the an image. You have an, an alt text, alternative text uh, field, which is, again, this is meant for people who um, are using screen readers to describe. And, you know, I might, and you don't want to get too crazy. Some, some people say so descriptive, like a gray and a white cat lounging on. And I might just say uh, two cats uh, relaxing on a chair, you know, two cats relaxing. You know, even that is some, as somebody's going through, they can say, oh, this is just a picture of two cats relaxing. It's nice to know that it's there, not necessarily anything so specific. Now, you might have a caption in, 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 in WordPress now, the caption is kind of built into that block where you might want to say um, two of 
our recent adoptees. Uh, Jerry and Tom, I don't know, right? So now this, these all become extra words that define, uh, define this image. Now, as far as going in here and if you were to replace this image or uh, look in the media library, this is, this is where you can set as a default within the um, that image library, that, that same uh, two cats relaxing and that will carry over that caption that we said, if I put it in and the uploading that would that would load in. This title is is something that is not really useful to anybody. Um, and I might call this Tom and Jerry if I knew who they were. Um, and then the description that, that we we're talking about, I'm gonna confirm where and how that's being used because I think that that is important. I normally focus on the caption and the, the alt text, but um, you know, having that information here and, and using that alt text uh, properly, not necessarily for SEO, although again, it helps because it's words describing the content on your page. Hey, Peter, we got a question first from Michael. Yep. yep. Michael, you got your hand. Yeah, my question was about the heading. So if you want to stay on this, I can come back a little bit. Okay. I didn't get my question in yeah. early enough. So if you want to finish what this part, no, we're, we're taking questions on it now. So Peter, we got, well, let's stick with this because we have another quick question on this. So, okay. um, uh, should the caption be a full sentence or does it not matter? Depends on your style, I would think. Um, it doesn't really matter. Um, it is it is like any, you know, not that many of us read newspapers anymore, um, but, uh, you know, the caption underneath or in, in a book or something that describes what it is. Um, like like I mentioned earlier, I, I do work for an art foundation and, uh, the, cap <clears throat> the captions are not sentences, but they're very descriptive of what that image is, which then gets carried over and say, you know, Esfir Slobodkina, 1934, abstract on oil on, on slate kind of kind of thing. So descriptive of what that image is. And, and I would say that's also just make sure you test your theme. Is it displaying right. the caption properly or the, or the block in this case too? The, you know, different things may control how the caption looks, how much text it gets displayed, what font it gets displayed in, et cetera. So... Exactly. All right, we're gonna go back to, so Michael, how about I ask your question if you go ahead about the, uh, the header? Okay, yeah, As what I was doing with the captions, when I have, I could just I take out the caption and put in a block and then I, I can control the color contrast easily enough. Uh, but yeah. the caption yeah. is what people yeah. see when they come to the site, right? If you wanna attribute an artist, but getting back to the headings, yeah, you know, and I've been using Cadence for several uh, builds recently. And so whenever you build a page, it automatically that becomes the the name of your uh, on the menu. That's the name of your page, and then right. when you start doing the text, it'll automatically start with H two uh, heading. Yeah. And so, so I'm thinking, okay, well, if a blog page, and then the the blog page, the blog is an H one. Does every blog need to be an H two, or can you, or is there something between blog posts and and pages that lets you use an H one and an H one? And I'm not entirely sure that the menu title, the page title is an H1. It, I can't really find that description, but whatever, but it, Cadence makes me automatically start typing in H2 underneath the page title. It so doesn't, you can, you can change that. So are you talking about within a single post, Michael? Are you talking uh, well, about I, I was going with a page. The page. And okay. I don't know. So if so if I if I create a page, so, let's yeah, just so say Peter, about you page. show create a new page, Peter, and then let's let's just so if you, you, let's just say you did the about page and then you started typing the text, cadence would make that text an H2 heading. Now you can go change it, but I'm afraid to change it to an H1 in case the page title is considered an H1. And so I'm trying to figure out all right, are the is there an H1 page? And let's just say you have a blog page. Well, is the blog title an H1? And so the next blog has to be an H2 or should be an H2 because you don't want you don't want two H1s on a single page. Does that kind yeah. of give me a question there? Yeah, I'm looking at like, so we haven't we haven't touched anything right now. We've installed the SEO plugin. When I ran this before, the H1s on um, let's say like the oh the contact page, there is no H1, it's blank. Yeah, right. you can't see what it is when you because there's no block. It's it's no, a menu. there is none. Uh, saying like so, you can always view page source if you want to see the real um, 
the real. So you, you look at what the privacy page, Peter? Yeah. So Wouldn't I publish it. one be just the title of it? The, the, the H1 is the title of the page or post. Yeah. Correct. So then anything, so let's just say you had a blog page. So yep. every blog underneath, you probably need to start with an H2 heading. Um, a heading, well, if, if, if in fact, so your pay, your post title will be an H1. Even if it's on a page uh, is H1. Yeah. Okay. A, a, a page title or a post title, that thing when you first, you know, create a new one. Um, but it doesn't have to be. I, I think that's just the, the key thing is though, I, I don't think that's entirely true. So why don't you create just a blank page for a second? Yeah. Please? Yeah. So add new up there. Yeah. yeah. Jesus, I'm looking at it. I'm going totally blind. 15 ways to do the same thing. Yeah. And I'm, I'm over there. So um, that's your H1. That's the H1 automatically. Yeah. So if you were to return and start a new block, it'll automatically give you an H2 heading. There when you say a new heading, like he's just typing in text, or this is just a text block. This is not a heading at all. Yeah. Right. But what's the. It's a it paragraph. Oh, it's a paragraph. Yeah. So if you went heading, right, and yeah. picked the heading, the the default is always an H2 because right. there's always an assumption that the page title is the you H1. can change it to an H1, but you you wouldn't want to because your page title is the H1. That's the first. Okay. That's, yeah. Yeah, I follow follow that part. I just didn't know that if my it, let's just say that new page was blog page. And then you do a blog underneath it, but it, apparently there's enough separation that you're not you don't have two H ones. The page no. is an H one, and each blog post will have an H one. So if you're having like a, a blog archive, yeah. Okay, so that's handled a little bit differently because WordPress is smart enough to know that when you're showing this as the thing, use the H one or WordPress slash cadence. When you're showing an archive, it uses the value that is in the page title now as um, okay. It might, it may be an H two, or maybe and that's and that's the cadence. Post, <clears throat> that's the cadence post yeah. block that's doing that. So if you use a different theme, it's not these rules right. don't okay. apply. Yeah, uh, Maria has a yeah. Yeah. yeah, just yeah. kind of a segue. So on, if you're doing a home page, like your hero section, that would be an H one because your title is going to be uh, the name of your website dot com. Correct unless you put an H1 in there explicitly. So a, a homepage is a great example of by yeah. default, no, your, your H1, like I'm looking at ours is blank. Right. Because we so have to would, define an H1. Exactly. But right. Imagine we, have exactly. A, we, imagine we have a hero section with a splash picture yes. or something. We want to put in there, uh, please adopt cats. We yeah. would need to explicitly put that as an H1. Okay. Make, That's exactly what I needed to know. That's I wanted to make sure I was doing it right. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. The, the, the thing with the, with the homepage here, is if we go to edit this real quick, because it, oh, sorry, that's not the home page. That's the home Just page. a quick time check, we got three minutes. Yeah, okay, that's an edit. Um, this, if I remember correctly, if I remember that should correctly. actually be H1, help a pet in need. Yeah, but we are hiding the title. Show so. the uh, just one, sorry, Peter, just one quick thing. Yeah. Click, click the little eye icon to back to the outline thing in WordPress itself. It's the block editor, you know, to the left of design library, two icons over. Move, move your uh, mouse up. Oh. Click on the eye. That, that's the other place too in WordPress where it shows you the, the structure too. So here you can see we have a title, but we don't have an H1. But we don't have an H1. Yeah, the H2 is here. Yeah, I'm, I'm honestly, I, I don't recall if that is a function of when you make something a homepage um, or if we have, I know that there are cases where with some of these where you're setting, um, don't, you know, hide the page title um, and you won't see that, but that's a little bit different. The homepage is always going to be treated a little bit different. Um, How about and, just, um, sorry, so just, uh, like, just a, one quick thing to wrap up because this came up in the chat as well too. Yeah. Uh, we talked about links and internal links, and, and you could still keep driving this, Peter, too, is that idea of, um, of of links. You Also, one thing you want to consider is not having broken links, and, and that oh, yeah. the tools will show you what a broken link or not. So a broken link, you may intentionally break a link. So let's say, for example, we, you, you delete a page. 
or a post or something. Yeah. What's nice about these SEO plugins, SEO press in particular, is it gives you that ability when you delete a page, it'll say, do you want to create a redirect at that point? Right. So with, within, um, if you go to SEO, you can also do a separate plugin too. I don't know if you're showing redirection. I was going to show which one do you like? Well, I'm saying within SEO press itself, it's built in there. So you don't yeah. even need a, another plugin. That's one of the reasons yeah. I like it too. So yeah, so if you go to um, SEO up there and go to, where is it? Uh, actually go to one of the, the poster pages. Go to one of our, um, yep. and then the meta box down here. We won't do it on this one, but somewhere down here in advanced, I believe. Scroll up a little bit, sorry. I know you, um, scroll, redirection, see that tab up there, redirection. Yeah. So at this point, you yeah. can you can create it right on the fly here. Yeah. So that's, that's another nice. This is one of the reasons I like this plugin because a lot of stuff is kind of built in here. You don't need a bunch of different plugins doing this. So again, a redirect for people who don't know. That's just saying you don't get penalized from a search engine standpoint. That means you've intentionally moved some content. You say this link no longer points to this. It points to something else internally. Yeah. Bro broken links are something to pay attention to. Having you know checking the pages. Um, some of these tools, like I, I believe even this, um, this little thing I'm showing you will show you broken links per page, which actually personally, I prefer a lot of ways because I'm all, always, I'm often looking at the page. You can use on top of everything. If you want to scan your whole site, there's a couple of tools here, broken link checker, um, and all I would use these with some caution. Um, I like, if I use a tool like this, I scan it, get the results, and then I disable it because broken link checker will sit there and constantly be looking at your site and there's overhead that goes with it and it send you an email going, hey, I found a broken link. You know, I, I don't need to have it email me when just one thing, I'll go in and periodically uh, change things, but that's uh, that's uh, a tool to use. Right, so we're we're out of time. We're out of time. <laughs> this, ding, is ding, ding. this is what we want. We wanted some, thank you everyone for um, interacting. Maria, Michael, thank you so much for the great questions and, and others as well in the chat. This was, this was awesome. So again, the thing we, we want to encourage everyone to do is um, you know, these tools, we'll send out all this information afterwards. We'll send out the links to the tools that we showed. We'll send out the recording, um, a, a link to the recording afterwards too. Try this out on your own sites. And, and obviously we ran out of time here, but that's what the Facebook page is for as well. The Facebook group, I should say. So as you find issues on your own sites, you have other questions, you know, please post that on the Facebook group. We, we love to, to dive in and, and help out and, and help answer things. So we can't cover it all. So any parting words, Peter, about? Well, hopefully we're, we're, we're showing folks that there's a common sense approach to a lot of this stuff. Um, and it doesn't have to be that hard or that daunting. Just think in terms of good content to a person. And then there's certain things that if you know enough about the, the things to pay attention to, then you can get the details from us, from other tools and all um, without getting so bogged down in every last, oh, I use 220 letters instead of 230, whatever, you know? So don't get bogged in the details, common sense approach, write good content for this, yeah. All right. Well, thanks again, everyone, for joining us in the last meetup of 2021. Can you believe it? Wow. <laughs> it flies. But I hope you people, yeah, again, if, if, if you like what you saw here, um, we hope you'll join us again for the rest of these sessions. We're still building out the site. We're going to have at least a couple more sessions of building it out. Yep. So eventually we're going to do performance tuning on the site, too. That's another one coming up. Um, we didn't even touch images tonight. We have done images. Oh, we have the, done the social media yeah. integrations. We got a right. lot of stuff left to do. So again, thanks everyone for joining us and, and have a good night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Good night.